everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Beyond Kicking and Punching podcast with Sifu Aldacascos and myself, Sunny Pavoya. So again, today is Thursday and it's Ask Sifu Al Question Day. So the big question of the day is, is doing forms or practicing forms important? So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to ask the man himself because he's got many experience when it comes to doing forms as well as fighting in the ring and outside on the street. So now let's ask him what he thinks. So Sipuel, welcome. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining in on us. Uh, we're having a real good blast today. The question is pretty loaded because, you know, there's people who ask me if practicing forms necessary because some people just don't like forms at all. But I'll get to that. Before we begin getting into that subject, I have an announcement and I have also a special guest from, from Salt Lake City. And I'd like to introduce him to you because he's going to be doing a seminar, Grandmaster Sam Ellis from Salt Lake City. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. We'll be hosting the Grandmaster Seminar in Salt Lake City, Utah on April 22nd and 23rd. And uh, it's going to be for two days. Uh, Friday evening, we're going to have a meet and greet where all the Grandmasters and anybody who wants to buy a ticket for it can come meet the Grandmasters and talk to them and ask them questions personally, one-on-one, -on, -one, on Friday evening at 7 p.m. on the 22nd. Uh, we also have Mark Shua, Grandmaster Mark Shua, is going to be doing a special demonstration at that event. You know, when the old masters in China became older, they had to use canes. And so they actually started developing martial arts techniques with the canes, and he'll be just demonstrating that. The other thing we're gonna do on Friday night is we're also gonna have uh, some of the grandmasters get up and tell an incident or story or an important event in their martial arts life. And we're gonna have them get up and, and a few of them talk about that. Saturday morning, we'll have the seminar. Seminars are gonna start around uh, eight o'clock in the morning. We'll have two or three rooms going depending on what we need when we get there. And we have grandmasters and senior grandmasters coming from all over the United States to be here. Some of the anchor people we have here is, of course, Sifu Al Uh He's like the house band for this event, basically, if you want to say that, you know. And so we have a lot of grandmasters, different systems and styles. And so when we created this Unified Grandmasters Association in order to pr provide this kind of event. And then Saturday night, we'll have the summit dinner uh, where Grand Ma Senior Grandmaster Aldo Costco is one of the keynote speakers to it. Uh, and there'll be some awards. There'll be two to three lifetime achievement awards to be given out at that, and then some other awards. And then we'll have some talks, including Ted Sumner, myself, and a Senior Grandmaster Aldo Costco. Okay, I got a couple of questions to ask you. Yeah. Um, why, why and how uh, did you come up with it? What, what was the purpose behind it? Yeah, so years and years ago, you know, I used to do cer certain events here in Salt Lake City, but when I started traveling around teaching at different seminars and stuff like that, I realized that what is really needed is to bring all these people together. Because there was, if you remember back in the 50s and the 60s, well, I don't remember the 50s, but uh, the 60s and, and 70s, all martial arts people were kind of together. They helped each other, and, and now there's this big division. And one of the reasons I, I put together this uh, organization is to try to bring this back together because we're kind of doing the same thing, a little bit different. The other thing too is that, you know, I can study my entire life. I've been doing it now for 54 years. I still have a lot to learn. And how I learn is through people like yourself or Casey Clayton or Tony Martinez, the senior grand masters. This is how I learn. So this gives an opportunity for everybody. Doesn't matter what system or style they're coming in, they can come in and get information that they'll never get unless they attend a, an event like this. Okay, um, uh, this is open to everybody? It is. It oh, is. So you have any age restriction? Nope. Uh, zero to, well, 120. <laughs> That's good. Um, where is the main event going to be taking place at? Okay, so this is going to be at the Mar Marriott uh, Hotel, the University Park Marriott Hotel by the University of Utah. Uh, a really great event uh, or a venue that uh, I think you were there two years, three years ago. And that's where it's going to be. And we'll be posting a lot more information on this about times and rooms. They give us a special rate. So if somebody needs a room there, when they call in, 
tell them they're with the Unified Grand Masters Association, they get a special rate. In fact, I think it only went up $5 from two years ago. So I, they're treating me pretty good here at the hotel. So in signing up, where do they sign up? Directly to you or, or do you have a venue that to, you know, to do the payments and to right. reserve everything? Yeah, uh, Eventbrite. Eventbrite is what we use. All you have to do is go to eventbrite.com and type in Unified Grandmasters Association and Master Seminar. It'll bring it up. There'll be a series of tickets you can you can buy. The tickets start from like $30 to $90. In fact, I kept the same price for the seminar as I did three years ago because I'm trying to keep the cost down so more people can come to this event, you know. And uh, there are various different tickets there. In fact, I give first responders and veterans a 10% discount to come and there's also spectator tickets if somebody just wants to spectate they can come in and watch these masters teach watch yourself teach really come away i've had so many good comments from the one we did the last time that you know this is what spurred me on to do another one that's great because i remember the last one we were at or you know that you had i mean it was packed it was a lot of people it was really a lot of good instructors Matter of fact, I just kind of sat in and watched a lot of the other Grand Masters and says, and you know, even myself, you know, um, there's always opportunity to learn. They know, they have mastered fields that I haven't. And even participating, even as, as a spectator, there's a lot to learn. So, you know, I would encourage a lot of you that uh, interested in the martial arts, you know, whether it's for the curiosity of it or for something, for, you know, for the spirituality of it or the physical abilities that you learn, what is going to be sport, self-defense or fitness, this is a really great event, especially when you have top-notch instructors from all over that have been selected to teach in, in a good field. So I would, I would definitely recommend a lot of you to get in on it. Is there any last thing, a minute thing uh, you want to say? Well, we have already, we have already got about eight or nine uh, grandmasters and student grandmasters signed up to do this. And I'm talking to some more people who started back in the, in the early 60s I'm trying to get the most senior people I can here. Uh, more senior re means more knowledge. And uh, that just makes the event so much better, you know? And so uh, I would encourage everybody, and you know, our space is somewhat limited there. So I would encourage everybody to get the tickets as soon as possible. And uh, I think it's gonna be a, a great time and, and uh, it's gonna even be better than the last time we did it. Right. Well, I thank you for coming on. We're gonna be advertising this for the next, uh, few months all the way up until the April. So Sam, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for all your information. Thank you yep. very much. Thank you, Sifu. Thank you. Okay, back to where we are. A lot of people ask about forms. Forms, I'm saying, what is forms? I, I'm not interested in forms. And some people that have already practiced forms went through the stage where they're no, no longer interested in doing forms. So they ask, you know, is forms necessary? Well, okay, let's get to it. Forms, you know, what is forms, especially when it comes to martial arts? You have to take a look at forms as like being floor gymnastics, movements that you do. Anything that you do forms that has more than three movements up to 100 or 200 movements is considered a form on account that you are memorizing it to do it in sequence. So what is the purpose mm -hmm. of forms is to do a lot of things. Now, gymnastics have their own own way of doing that. So does the martial arts. Now, martial arts, when they practice forms, you know, come up for many different reasons. One is self-discipline, respect for the art they are doing. The, the other is also for balance, for speed, for timing, for power, for focus. All of this it makes it really good for practicing form. They do it in patterns, going this way, one way, and practicing certain skin movements. Now, in practicing forms, there are some systems that use the traditional, you know, like you get into the uh, outer blocks, there's when you have punching, upward blocks, downward block, and some other forms of martial arts don't even do that. They use side movements, they use this movement, they use that kind of movements. It really depends on whether it's going to be like the Filipino fighting arts, I scream a Kali on his, or you practice in um, Korean and uh, Japanese Okinawan, you know, Japanese Okinawan, they call it kata. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, Korean, they call it, how do you pronounce it? Kumsei. Yeah, okay, that's a hard one, you know. <laughs> um, okay, something like that, okay. <laughs> These are all forms and they, they are designed for many different things. It's really, you can tell 
because when you practice certain forms, some forms are going to be very lineal, straight. Some of them is going to be very circular and everything, like a wushu or kung fu forms. And you know, they go into different with hard style and soft style, and and then some of them are kind of mixed. So if you you know see some of the Japanese or Korean. They're, they're very, it's very, you can see it, especially the Korean forms. You can see the high kicks and sometimes the flying kicks and everything else this way. And the stance is a little bit more higher. When you take a look at the Okinawa and Japanese, there's a little bit medium stance over there. And there's not too much of the kicking techniques all over the, uh, they have. It's more like <clears throat> steady and, you know, and, but yeah. when you practice the, the wushu forms or the, uh, the kung fu forms, yeah, and that, by the way, the meaning of, of Kung Fu is skill to the accumulation of hard work, but it's normally referred to as the fighting part of it. Some yes. people are going to disagree with me on that. And then you have the Wushu uh, part of it. And the Wushu part is they practice, get, they practice the Filipino fighting arts into three different areas. The Filipino fighting areas that they practice into the, the form part, you know, it's called Espada Edaga and Solo Baston and Sinawale, which is all movements. These are all forms. But here's the thing. When you practice form, some forms, when you say, we look at forms of, as being what I talked to you about, the balance, the coordination, the focus, the stamina, the, the power, the total concentration, the breathing exercises, they're all done in sequence and it's memorized so that it becomes inside. And when they practice the form, it's not practiced normally in one direction. Some forms practice straight line back. Some other forms practicing as if they are defending against multiple multiple men, three or men, four men. It's all imaginary, all right? They are, they, this has all been prefixed into the mind so that they be able to flow naturally when things become chaos. Because right now, Forms is like, I would say, organized chaos. It's an organized movement of things. Then in reality, a lot of the movements may not work, especially the outer block downward work and things that way because it just don't happen that way. But it is building up the strength, the focus and so forth. I say it may not work. I'm not saying that it does not work because it works. It really depends on the person's mindset and the way he applies it and the environment of what it calls for. Because there are some situations where, where uh, out of the block wind may work and then a straight punch may work. It's because situations call for that, but you know, you never know what it's going to be because being that forms are pre-arranged, it's pre-arranged. Fighting under the street is not that way. It's not pre-arranged. It comes from all kinds of ways. So they say, is forms necessary? Yes, because even if you only practice three movements, it is a form. So if you go like, for instance, like uh, a person, you know, block this way, that's one movement, and then you go chop and you poke, that is a form. Because you're practicing that, that so much time and over and over so that you perfect yourself over and over so it becomes... You don't think about it anymore. It becomes spontaneous. And that's the area that you want to do. Remember what we talk about the five phases of learning. Even when practicing forms, everything to do with from a form is just like very, very, very primitive at the very beginning. And then it becomes mechanical because this is when you go to outward block, downward block, movement here to the side, breathing, focus. And then the technical part is why you're hitting, where you're hitting, when you're hitting. And then the part that's that is that it becomes very creative. Oh man, I can do this now and you start doing whatever you like. That becomes very fluid, uh, fluidity. Fluidity is the stage that you want to do from creating set forms to chaos, organized chaos, to chaos but the kind of chaos you have is actually organized because you actually know what you're doing so it, it comes into yeah. this one here learning the five stages and that's very very important that you folks understand that now again one of my students asked oh i don't like to do forms i used to do forms before i just don't care to do forms and well he did forms and i told him that what happened when you got into your first fight? He said, I just kicked and punched and everything. Well, where the hell do you think that movement came from? It came because you practiced form. 
And because that form came, it became so natural. Now, if you didn't practice that form in an organized way, do you think you would have been able to, to, to hit effectively? I'm saying effectively, okay? Because some people don't need martial arts and they just hit and it's all become by a natural intuition. They just go ahead and do it. But he became so focused that his techniques went straight into the head, elbow into this and here. And he said, what do you think it was? It came from his practicing of his form many years ago. And there's a lot of masters or grandmasters or instructors right now that have gone through all the forms, but they don't practice it as much as, 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 much as they do practice in mentality uh, in their minds because it's already there. It's like pretend as if that practicing form is putting like water into the freezer. It has to be a solid block of ice. You can take it out and leave it out for 10, 20 minutes. It will still be the form of ice, although some of it may drip away into water. However, if you put water into the, ref uh, into the freezer and you don't give it time to really become solid and you bring it out and it's lush, slush goes right back into water. So in practicing form, practicing form comes with putting all your energy focus until you become solid. You know it so well that when push comes to shove, you know how to kick. You're not just going to be going all over the place. So my recommendation is just that whether you're practicing three movements or a form that has a thousand movements, practice it. Because some of the guys, you know, like when I'm teaching, okay, you know, like a very basic things, okay, you have to punch and then punch, punch and stop. That's a form. And they just practice punch, punch, punch. And they practice it a lot of times. It becomes good. Now, when you practice forms, there's many ways to do forms. You can just go to the movements to get it inside. And then when it becomes boring, you do it again. Because that's when it becomes so natural for you that somebody calls, you're just going to be able to respond. So practicing forms is done. But when I tell pe people, especially students that I've had, many of them, I say, you know, do the form 10 times, do about three of them, just so there you go, another three to get to all the power, and then the last four, practice with speed, power, and it, as if this is the last form you're gonna be doing in your life. There's been many champions that has come up into, into the uh, competition. I mean, Chuck Norris was good, you know, Eric Lee, Ron Van Cleef, Dennis Brown, Carrere Cassell, Christian Wolf. Emmanuel Battencourt, Michael Timmerman, James Liu, and of course, we're not going to forget the women, you know, Malia, uh, Bernal de Cascos, and Christine Bannon Rodriguez, Cynthia Rothrock, Karen Turner, Karen Shepard. I mean, these are just some of the names. You know, you got people like uh, Gary Fallback. Are we talking about the old timers way, way back? Douglas Wong. I'm talking about my era, guys. I don't want, you know, if you guys are going to say, oh, I'm not. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm talking about guys that competed with me in the 60s, uh, the late 60s, 70s, and 80s, because I remember those folks. There's a lot of good form competitors now that op are getting to, to open competition. I, I'm, I'm not really familiar with a lot of them, but they are fantastic. You know, there's, there's a lot of it, you know, and um, as you can see, some of the videos that I just presented or the, uh, the pictures of some of the, the competitors you know, these people, let me tell you, was just that it's their life after doing forms. Well, it's very interesting because a lot of them, after being re recognized as champions in forms, and even in, even in competition, they, uh, they ended up being directors, you know, movie stars, you know, like, for instance, Cynthia Rothrock, Don Wilson, the drag a dragon. You've got Art Kamatri, you've got Eric Lee, they call him the king of Kanta. All of them, King of Kata, I mean, he ended up doing a lot of things, doing movies, being director, being producer, being writer. So there is life after forms. So I would suggest that be serious about it. Whether you practice uh, martial arts that have maybe three or four movements for a form, practice it so that it becomes very natural. Or if you practice a form that has 500 or 1,000, it's fantastic. Learn as much as you can. Yes, sir. That makes totally sense. It kind of reminds me where I had this conversation with a good friend who's uh, 
jiu-jitsu practitioner. And he says, we don't practice forms. And I said, sure you do, but you just don't call it forms. You have sequence of movements where you go from one movement to the next, to the next, to the next. And then you have alternative movements to counter the counters, right? So in a sense, he's doing forms. Like another example is right now I asked him, so what are you doing for practice? Because since with the pandemic, when we had to do closures of all the martial arts schools and all these stuff, you didn't get to train with students. You didn't get to train with partners or anything. What did you do? Well, I practice my stuff just on the mat on my own so what is interesting about that you know when they say they don't practice you know because i practice judo and jujitsu and everything and and we have it we have what's called shimi no kata yeah nagi no kata what do you think the word is kata means form so when we begin to practice this throwing techniques like grabbing it that's practicing form because the proper yeah. form that you have, you know, the instructor is going to come and your form is good. Now you can be able to live, but you need to know this. And anything that you practice, like even the way you you look, the way your shoulders move, the way you talk, the way you walk, it is form. The way that you can yes. practice the form. Yes. Yeah, that's real yeah. good. Um, yeah. I'd like to, you know, I mean, we're getting close to closing. And a yes. uh, couple of things we want to talk about is along the way is... Um, you got to make sure that you guys. Thank you, Sifu, for explaining that. And it was a great answer. And then also, I'm very, very excited about your upcoming uh, seminar event in Salt Lake City there in April. And so if you're interested, I would recommend you guys to make sure you sign up for it as sooner the better because it will be limited space. So it's first come first serve and there's a lot of great grandmasters who's going to be teaching. And the best thing to do guys is make sure learn it straight from the horse's mouth as we would say it. So again, thank you very much. First, you know, I want you guys to know that I do have my book Legacy available. For some of you that want to have an autographed copy, all you need to do is email me, and uh, which was going to see the email address, and then you we can make the arrangements on how to get it to you. Or you could get it from Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Any questions that you folks have, anything, not only concerning the martial arts, because we are mentors and life coach, and if we can help you in any way, fine. I think we're going to be ending now and getting ready for getting this product out to you so that we can see you on our next event, which yes. is going to be next week. All right. So again, take care, guys. Mahalo and God bless. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's if you guys celebrate and we'll see you soon. Take care. All right. Take care. Check it out. Bye.